Oh, oh, thank you. Excuse me. I was reading <laughs> the greatest book ever that's going to win this year, From the Ashes by Jesse Thistle. My apologies. Canadians have very quickly realized that we're not all that inclusive. Who knew? We're any, any better than the rest of the world. We're just more polite about our collective bigotry. If you think that the way that these men are portrayed is evil, you need to take a look at yourself. You need to question, why did this book challenge you? This book is not hard on men. It's hard on misogyny. It's hard on to toxic masculinity. The issues that we confront as a humanity are global issues. This pandemic, this virus, doesn't care about the borders of Canada. And I'm sorry, but the impact of George Floyd's death didn't care about the impact about the borders of Canada. My largest problem with this book was that three of the four stories were told through the lens of angry men. I'm so tired of having to consume mm -hmm. these stories as they reflect society as a whole. Whose society? Not mine. I mean, this is the first book I ever cried at. Second time around, I still cried in the same places. Mm -hmm. Come on. Canada consists of Indigenous people. Indigenous people know this story. We know this story. I don't want to read it anymore. I, I know it. I've, I either know people who lived it or I lived it. It paints the picture of our infrastructure, our housing situation. It paints the, the, the infrastructure of our education system. And so does system. Son of a Trickster. It's, it, well, this is a real story about someone so who came from an actual... Son of, a, son of a Trickster is written from a woman who has Fiction. experienced I'm not, I'm... From the Ashes is not only a story of fear and negativity and abuse, but more importantly, a love story. It was incredible. It made me think about myself and how I looked at Canada and how I look at people. It made me a better person after reading it. And it shows the complexities of relationships. It's not just black and white when you're abused. And it's, I think it speaks to an audience where you have complicated family dynamics, but you can still have love and loyalty to your family. And it, that's confusing. Mm -hmm. And I like the way it, it addressed that and helps readers feel comforted by that notion. The, the book, I think, is written that way on purpose because as a reader, we're meant to go through and pick up the pieces of these characters' lives, just like they're trying to do. Olive is trying to answer the same questions that we're trying to answer about what happened in that hotel room that night and what led her there. These are all things that we find confusing at the beginning as a reader because the characters are also confused. The characters I think that really stood out to me um, was Maggie, the mother. Um, yeah. As much as she, you know, at first glance you can be like, oh my God, she's awful, she's um, abusive, and yes, yeah, she is all of those things, but she's also, she is trying, she's still trying. Small game hunting drives you off a cliff. Nothing has changed in this book. These characters haven't changed, the systems that are in place haven't changed, and so that's why we get the ending that we get. And we walk away knowing that there's work to be done. Uh, all books uh, that we've discussed here, all five, uh, really, everyone needs to take the time to read because uh, we will identify with someone else if we take the time to read their story. We should read it because Clive Mensa is dead. Clive Mensa is a young man who lived in the Mississauga suburb um, having a mental health crisis and the police tased him six times and he died. I chose a book that spoke from both the side of the aisle that doesn't understand what I'm saying and does. Corey did a great job of painting both sides of the aisle when it comes to what we do about policing in the future. I hope that books like Eden's encourage Indigenous people to tell our stories, the ones that we want to hear, not the ones that everyone else expects us to tell. And we need to flood the bookshelves with our work. I want Indigenous crime, supernatural, sci-fi, non-fiction. We need to start taking over the bookshelves. I think it's imperative that all Canadians read this book. It also gives a community and a group of people that have been ignored to feel valued to feel seen, to feel safe, to feel recognized. The winner of Canada Reads <laughs> is We Have Always Been Here. Thank you! <laughs> Tell us, describe your feelings right oh, now in this I'm moment. so happy, I'm so proud of you, Samra. I, I, I first quickly wanted to say that I, I am really proud of what we accomplished at this table, um, and I think that we did give Canadians a lot to talk about. I